Hi, this is Aaron at thinkbotlabs.com and welcome back. Before we move on to level design, I thought it would be important to first look at sorting layers and the order in layer property. What I commonly see happen in 2D games is that people will add their sprites to the scene and then layer them based on the camera distance. What I'm talking about is if we go to our objects and grab a couple of sprites and bring them on the scene, right now both of these sprites are on the same um, z-axis. And we can look in 3D space and view that. So let's go back to 2D space. So if somebody wants this green barrel to be behind the other um, red barrel, what I see happening is that they bring the barrel back in 3D space. Now when they try to move it, it's actually behind that red barrel. And a lot of people will do this with many different layers, the background layer, the foreground, um, the UI, and then just try to make a, uh, an offset layer for each of the different um, layer types. And the layer backgrounds, um, they'll put props in the foreground with the camera um, Z axis. Well, you can adjust the sprites Z axis so it stands out or is behind another sprite. Sorting layers are used with sprites. And so let's go ahead and reset both of these back to zero on the z-axis. Now they're both on the equal plane. The preferred method is to use sorting layers. Sorting layers work with the sprite render to determine which order they should be rendered without worrying about the camera distance. So all sprite objects are set on a default sorting layer um, when they are created and added to the scene. Let's set up a few sorting layers to demonstrate uh, what we want to accomplish. So in the sorting layers, click the drop down and add sorting layer. So we have our player sorting layer and the default layer. So the way it's rendered is the default is in back and then the player. So let's add a couple more. We know we're going to want a background. We will want a foreground. And let's do a midground as well. This is going to be right um, above the background. And the player is always going to be on top. Now the GUI, the UI, is always going to be rendered on a layer of its own. So if we go to create UI and text, we see this text is on a layer all on its own. So let's go back and look at those. So we have the background, the midground, the foreground, and the player, but we also have layers. So Unity provides us with seven layers by default. And on layer five, you'll see UI. Layers are mainly used for ray casting and rendering for the cameras. And the sorting layers is what we're focusing on for our 2D sprites. Let's bring a few more sprites into the scene and we'll demonstrate these sorting layers. So let's go to our sprites, environment, and let's go objects. So let's grab a box and a door unlock, that'd be fine. So again, as soon as they're brought into the scene, they're set on the default sorting layer. So all four objects are on the same plane. Okay, and let's add the door to the background, which is gonna be the very back render. Let's add the green barrel to the next level which is going to be the midground. You can see that I can go ahead and drag that over the door. Let's get the red barrel, put it on the foreground. You can see I can drag that over the barrel and the door. And let's grab the box and add it to the player level. You can see that is rendered over all three of the other items. 
great. So that helps out a bunch because you don't have to keep on messing with the, the Z axis and say, well, I want my background on a 20, I want my foreground on a 10, and start messing with all that. You, you can just set up your sorting layers and be done with it. Another cool thing is that if I have two of these um, red barrels, let's duplicate this, and they're both on the foreground level, but I want the barrel, created too many, but I wanted the barrel, well, that's probably a bad example. Let's grab the, another green one and duplicate it and bring it over here. And so both of these are going to be on the foreground. So we can see that the green is overlapping the red. I want both of these to be on the same sorting layer, but I want the red to be in front of the green. So that's where the order in layer uh, comes in handy. I can say that my red has an order in layer of 1, which is greater than my green, which has an order in layer of 0. So now when I click the red and drag it over the green, you can see that it covers up. And again, they're on the same sorting layer. Last thing I want to show you is that in code, you can set the sorting layer on an object. So let's go to scripts. Let's create a new script. And let's call this sort layer. Let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, let's remove everything out of the center. Sometimes I wish it would just come blank. Save me a lot of work. Not that it's a lot of work or anything. So, to set this up, we need a public string. And we'll call this sort layer name. We'll need a um, public game object go. This is just going to hold a reference to the sprite. And then in start, go dot get component render dot. And you can see that we have three different sorting variables to choose from. Sorting layer, the sorting layer ID, which is the numerical value um, in which that layer has been created. Sorting layer name is the string value which we can type in there what such as foreground, background, player, and the sorting order. The sorting order again is on the sprite render the order in layer. So we can give it a value there. Let's go back to our script and finish it up and we're going to use the sorting layer name and this is going to be set to the sort layer name. Okay, let's go back to our script, or actually let's go back to our project. Let's go ahead and create an empty, and we'll name this to background. And let's tag it with the sort order script. So the script is looking for the sort order name and a game object. Sorting layer we're going to use is background, spelled exactly as it is. and the game object will set as the box. The box is currently set as player, which we did manually earlier. So let's grab it, cube, or the box, into the game object. So when we click play, the box is now on the background sorting layer. This is great because now we're able to spawn objects or create objects and tag them with a particular sorting layer which helps out tremendously. So from here we can expand on the sorting layer by creating a, an array of the game object and then loop through for int i equals zero i is less than game object dot actually go 
echo dot length i plus plus and type tonight. Let's go ahead and grab this, paste in here, and we'll say go array. Go ahead and save that off and go back to our project that compile. Alright, let's go back to the background and now all of the sprites, let's say five, all of the sprites that we add into the sort layer script are now going to be tagged on the background. So let's go ahead and grab all of these objects, the barrel, this barrel, the door unlock, and the box. And add them all there. So, the barrel, this barrel, door unlock, and the box, and this barrel. I'm going to go ahead and play this. And now they're all on the same layer. Select it. And there you go. So that's a quick demonstration on the sorting layer and the order in layer. In the next uh, tutorial, we'll start working on our game design. Till then.